Jarvis, and once again, I want to welcome you to listen the state of black America. The state of black America is in disarray. Our nation seems to be in disarray. But, but the key to the survival of black folks in America historically, as heinous and treacherous as, as our treatment and, and our situation, we survived. How did we survive? By, by being wise enough, our ancestors being wise enough to disassociate themselves from the system that oppressed them. To, to disassociate yourself but still utilize and use the system for your benefit, but never to be confused into believing the system was about you. You simply found a way to use the system. You can look at, at the um, institutions, sports institutions, entertainment institutions, that were tailored to ostracize black people. But, but still utilize those industries and progressed. Black folks progressed their way to acceptance by utilizing the system. You, you can't utilize a system if you don't know how it functions. If, if you don't know a system is, is tailored to function against you, you'll never be well. And see, that's the purpose of critical race theory. Critical race theory isn't for white people. Critical race theory is, is for black people, as it relates to black people. Of course, the idea of CRT has been expanded to other groups, other racial groups as well, other social groups that have maybe redefined themselves. But, but particularly for this program, black people, critical race theory identifies the, the mechanisms in place that, that have in effect brainwashed black people into believing that they are something that they are not, and usually in a negative way, so as to maintain the, the, the subclass status, okay? And, and so like, for example, having, having white teachers from, from kindergarten all the way up through college that, that, that is speaking to an individual subconscious, okay? Having, having management in, in organizations that are all white and workers that are, are primarily black, that, that is speaking to the subconscious of, of where you're supposed to be. Looking in our neighborhoods, where we are, are, are self-destructive, whether it be drugs, whether it be gang-banging, uh, uh, just not maintaining employment, uh, men uh, growing up, leaving their mama's house simply to be living in a woman's house who's, who's on assistance, uh, government assistance. These are all subconscious suggestions that, that people begin living out, black people begin living out, white people too, but for this conversation, black people. We, we need to recognize that, that we are, are not what we have primarily been defined to be, okay? And we have primarily been defined to be by the system. I, I, I don't believe, and, and there are many that might uh, disagree with me, and I understand that, but, but I don't believe uh, the, the, the people that were responsible for these institutions, for these subconscious influences. I don't believe they were that smart to have come up with this uh, for the intent you know, of, of oppressing and suppressing black people. I believe this was simply the natural uh, tendency to, to exclude black people from positions of influence and power and, and its unintended consequences was a subconscious identification of these black people of, of the place that that we were in in society okay and that still goes on today critical race theory in so many other ways and uh, as well and so I, I look at in this nation one of the culprits I believe is politics I believe it's religion as well <laughs> 
and, and it's our, our status in, in the social order as well. Um, and so that's what we're going to discuss today. Because uh, and emancipation having been um, 1865, <laughs> Uh, that's a pretty long time to still be in a position where black folks are being choked out and wrongfully imprisoned and wrongfully sentenced uh, to to prison systems. Okay, and and uh, and so so what I'm going to suggest is I don't blame white people. And I think as long as we have this blame game and we're blaming somebody other than ourselves, we're never going to be well. Okay, but but we have to recognize what we've been sucked into. Okay. We have, we have one purpose, one purpose in this nation, and that is for total equality. Total equality, black people to white people, okay? Every, every race, ideally, but, but for this particular program, black people. And, and so, so as, we are, as, we are, as we are moving toward that goal, that's the prize. You know the old saying, keep your eyes on the prize? Well, there's a purpose behind that saying. Because it's so easy to get your eyes off of the prize. And once your eyes are off of the prize, you're not in pursuit of the prize. You're no longer going forward, okay? But, but we are, are so easily uh, moved, f our focus from the prize to something else. Now, now, in this land where we're still looking for total equality, and in a situation like the abortion issue comes up, or, or the gun issue comes up, or, or even the politics and a president and voting and all this stuff pops up. We're taking our eyes off the prize and we're believing we're really part of this institution here in an equal sense to where, where, where we, are, we are free. Okay, and, and so what I'm suggesting is any time a situation comes up that takes our focus off of our total equality, we've taken our eyes off of the prize and we're no longer moving forward. Okay, And, and so, for example... We look at the abortion issue. First of all, we need to recognize, as black people in this nation, we are not political. You, you know, we might act like we're political. We might put that political hat on, whether it be Republican or Democrat or whatever. But, but until there is total equality, we're not really part of that system. Now, now we will be used for our votes, and we will be courted for our votes, you know. That's my black over there, you know what I'm saying. But, but, the, but the reality is, is that if you're not totally um, equal... Then, then you really don't have a place in politics other than simply being used by this particular party or that particular party uh, for your vote, okay? So your vote counts. You don't, okay? And, and so we need to recognize that we're not political in this nation as black people. But, but we can, as, as our ancestors of old recognized, they weren't really part, a viable part of society, but they found ways, wise ways to use the society, to manipulate the society for their own good, for their own survival. I think it's easier to embrace this concept when you are actually struggling to survive, rather than having the, the comforts and, you know, seeming comforts, but not total equality, it, it is easier to be cajoled in, into, into, into uh, taking your eyes off the prize and, 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 and affixing yourselves to other projects, other projects that are philosophical luxuries to white people. And, 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 and so we affix ourselves to those projects, and, and we lose sight of the, the prize that was before our eyes, okay? And so we can look at the abortion issue, for example. And, and so you have now black women um, fighting for the right to kill their fetus. Okay? And, and so, 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 we are, so you have black women who, who do not have total equality, who do not have equal rights to white women, and, and so this issue of abortion is, is more of a luxury of philosophy and, and, and a desire to have a, a right where, where this black woman has simply joined herself to, to this agenda of white women and, 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 and is struggling for the right to kill their fetus too. At the same time, they do not have all the same rights as you cannot fight for a particular right while you are unequal, linked arm in arms with people who are who are better than you in the 
in the eyes of society. Okay? I mean, we saw this as black people when, when women w were seeking the right to vote. And, and so, of course, they had support from the black community, support from black women as well. But, but when the dust settled and the smoke cleared, white women had the right to vote. And all black people were still left blowing in the wind, okay? We, we need to be aware of that. We have one prize before us, and that is equality. Now, now, I'm not saying we can't make money. I'm not saying we can't be prosperous. I'm not saying we can't be multimillionaires. But we have to remain, uh, we have to remain understanding of the situation that is presenting itself before us, okay? We look at, at, um, at politics the same. As far as like the January 6th insurrection, for example. Now, now we know good and well if black people had been charging <laughs> the Capitol like that in mass, the, there would have been a whole lot of dead people on the Capitol steps. Okay, it wouldn't have gotten like that. It wouldn't have been like that. So, 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 and and, and as we're looking at the hearings, and and it's really fun watching the January sixth hearings. You know, it's sort of like uh, better than Netflix. And the special, we got one more special coming, you know, and then the season's going to come back, season two in July and all, okay. But, but even given that, we have to maintain that we are not political. Now, now, we can watch it, and we can be entertained, and we can enjoy it and all, and we can take notes, but recognize you're not part of that process. And, and, and you know what, to be honest with you, if, if the situation had been, well, say the... Uh, the insurrectionist to charge the black caucus, you know, <laughs> and, and take a bunch of black congressmen and congresswomen captive and finally release them and all, it, it wouldn't be getting this much hoopla. See, see what happened, those insurrections, they, they, they challenged white folks. Okay, now they were white, predominantly white, and, but they challenged the institution of white people. So, so it's not a, like a black man being killed and then a cop saying he was stressed or, you know, or, or a white guy, citizen killing a black uh, youth and saying that he felt like his life was threatened. No, these white folks threaten white people and they're not having it. And, and that's what you see, that's what we see in the January 6th hearings. And, and you can even see this as well when you look at the, the witnesses. 99.999 percent .999 are not black. Why? Because the, the people that they're trying to impress, the people that they're trying to convince, will not be convinced if they see a black face testifying. And, and you know, the kicker was, I guess, Cassidy uh, Hutchinson, the 25-year-old white uh, girl that was executive assistant and to, to Mark Meadows and to the president and to Scalise and all these cats. She got up there, you know, and testified. And it was really touching. Even Fox News was saying, you know, she, they were buying her story because she was like a white girl, you know, and, and look, they, she looked like somebody they could identify with. And, and they bought it hook, line, and sinker, and she was probably telling the truth. But, but if a black man or a black woman had sat up there with natural hair, you know, and just, you know, looking like us, the, her credibility would have been challenged. And they wouldn't have believed it. They wouldn't have bought it. And, and so we as black people simply need to recognize and, and not hate about it, but this is, is the, 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 the society, the system in which we live. So, so we have to find a way to, to use that, to manipulate that for our benefit. And, and the number one most important aspect is recognizing that you are not part of this system, that you are trying to use the system to better yourself. Until there is total equality, we are not part of the system. We're not a viable part of the system. And, and that part of us that is viable, that part of us that is important, like our vote, like our money, <laughs> we, need to, we need to recognize this, man. And, and so that's one of the, for me, one of the frustrations of our people, you know, in this nation, is, is that the, the only reason that, that we are still continuing to be in the position we're in is not because of white people, it's because of us. Is because we're too easily cajoled by, by uh, an appearance of convenience, by tidbits that are thrown at us. I, I, I don't even, like Juneteenth, the federal holiday. Juneteenth was a tidbit. The president just threw it black people and we just ate it right up. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
Now, come on, man, really? Uh, how many people hadn't even heard of Juneteenth up until recent years? <laughs> Most of our raising, we hadn't heard of Juneteenth. Thank you, sir. A tidbit for your allegiance. Recognize that, okay? And, and so... <laughs> We don't want tidbits, we just want total equality. And that's it. Okay, so so let's let's step back. Let's step back quickly to back to that abortion issue. I think we need to hone in on that a minute because I think that is very important to the black community. I think we need to recognize that this idea about black people killing their future, <laughs> killing their babies. I mean, come on, our ancestors actually sacrificed, and some even sacrificed their lives so that their children would live. But, but now black people are fighting. Black people are fighting for the right to kill their babies. And what, what is even more amazing to me are the number of black ministers that, that, that are out proclaiming that, that women should have the right to kill, that black women should have the right to kill their black babies. And I'm not going into the whole scientific thing about the fetus and the heartbeat really isn't a heartbeat at six weeks, just a cardiac response or blah, blah, blah. Fine. I'm just suggesting that each of us who, who are existing today, who are living today, who are breathing today, you, me, your kids, your mother, your father, your aunties, your uncles, we were all a fetus at one time and this is what we are today. So, so however you want to scientifically, you know, sleight of hand, you know, like that three-card Molly game, however you want to psycho uh, uh, scientifically put it out there to, to justify it, the reality is what would be a human being, this life, what would be a human being, to kill it <laughs> is to eliminate that, that which we are, because we were that, okay? So, so I'm just saying, and I'm not even saying that, for, and this is not political and it's not religious. There's a reality that in the 70s they came out with the numbers. Then in the 21st century, this century, 2020, the 21st century, 2022, the 20s, that, that white people were going to be, were no longer going to be a majority in this nation. Okay? That was a problem. And so, and, and so the, the attack was like a two-pronged attack, a flank attack is what they call in the military. You're going to attack from the front and attack from behind. So, so the front attack was immigration, limit immigration of black people into this nation, okay? And, and promote the immigration of white people in this nation. We're always complaining about it. We're, we're always complaining about how unfair the immigration policy is to black people, and we're watching them just funnel white folks right into this nation from other nations. Well, this is because we're trying to limit uh, the, the effect which, which was to be in, t in the 21st century of white people becoming not becoming a minority. So, so, so what do you do? You limit the amount of black immigrants and you increase the amount of white immigrants. Why? Right? Of course. It's math. So, so what's that flank? What's the other side of this thing? Promote abortion of black babies. But what better way to, to, to decrease the population uh, than, than to promote the, uh, the abortion of black babies, black fetuses, the potential to be born of black people? Come on now. So you're limiting the black people that are coming into this nation, and, and you're also drastically eliminating the black people that will be born into this nation. Okay. Now, now the problem with the abortion issue in this nation is that white women... Be, be, fell in love with this concept of convenient <laughs> abortions. And, and they began having abortions themselves. So it, it affected through a monkey wrench in the plan. It, it's almost like trying to bail, uh, keeping water from coming in, you know, plugging up this hole, but it's coming in another hole. You know, you're trying, the white people are trying, the powers that be were trying to ensure that their minority status would be pushed out for a while till they came up with another game plan. So, so we're going to let no, we're going to stop letting black immigrants in, and we're going to be letting more white immigrants in, and black women are going to be aborting their fetuses. So we're going to be preventing black people from being born in this nation. 
White women loved it. Supreme Court, okay, we got to back up um, 50 years. Now, now, a lot of folks are out there up in arms, and we as black people, we just buy in to, to just about anything to, to satisfy someone else's agenda and believe it's our own, okay? So, so black, black folks now who were slaves in this nation, who, whose ancestors, half of them died on the Middle Passage coming over to this place, were enslaved, murdered, <laughs> tortured, in bondage for hundreds of years, finally freed and then murdered, executed, mistreated, imprisoned, wrongfully, Jim Crowed, fought for civil rights and even still today being murdered by the police and other citizens claiming they were afraid for their lives. And, and we're fighting for the right to kill our black babies before they're born. <laughs> Come on now. We're, we're, we're so confused. We, we should just be having our babies, raising them to become strong, moral <laughs> voters. <laughs> okay, for real. It, it, it's very important. So, so we need to not buy into this popular agenda of folks in this nation who are not going through what we're going through. And, you know, one of the talking points is that, you know, religion, keep your religion out of our politics. This, this whole thing with the Constitution, I mean, I'm not political. I'm probably left-leaning, but then I'm, I have an AR. And I, I don't believe in abortion. I believe in being frugal with money. You know, that might, you know, but then on the other hand, you know, I can't see linking my arms with, ra race, uh, with, with, with racism, okay? So I'm just on the outside, man. We are just black folks that are not really attached to the political party, but we can, you know, manipulate the parties, you know, to make sure we get what we want. But, but so, so now they're saying that, you know, this religion can't have a say in our politics and, and looking at the, the Supreme Court and this abortion issue, but it's not about religion. It's simply about interpreting the intent of the Constitution, and these guys determined that abortion rights are not uh, covered or intended in the in the Constitution, and so 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 they the, it's not a constitutional right abortion. That's what they determine. Now that is the purpose of 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 the Supreme Court, and and so their their uh, their motive. You know, we want to say it's political, and it probably is. Of course, it's political, but but their interpretation uh, of, of the Constitution simply determined uh, that that uh, abortion rights are not a constitutional right, okay? So they pushed it over to the uh, to states to make those determinations. But but those talking points are so easy. <laughs> and then again, I'm seeing some posts coming up, you know, Clarence Thomas, you know, if they repeal this, you know, you would even have your... Here they get back to... See, these are the privileged folks who have the luxury of, of philosophizing, you know, about their rights that are being trampled on. And, and, for, and for fodder, for backup, they're going to be dragging up black folks and throwing them out. Sort of like, you know, the terrorism, how they'll, they'll line uh, innocent people up in front of the windows. That's who you are. That's who black people are in this nation for the politicians. You know, they will, they will, uh, they will utilize whatever, uh, they will utilize you, you know, so that their survival will be more comfortable, so their lives will be more comfortable. Um... I, it's amazing how, how they are attacking uh, Clarence Thomas, and you got other justices that voted for the same. <laughs> Where that black man at? <laughs> I mean, I'm saying, we need to see this, okay? Now, now guns. Let's talk about guns for a moment. Now, now again, we're, we're not political in this nation. We might think we are, but we're just being suggested that we are political simply for our, uh, for our allegiance, for our votes, okay? Now, you can manipulate you know, the, the, the system to, to aid you. But we always have to remain cognizant that we are not really of the system. We are just functioning here and we're trying to make sure we, we're the better for it, okay? So, so the gun issue, for example. I, I am also amazed at the number of black people that are, 
that are championing the cause of gun control, okay? I don't care what you call yourself, a Republican, a Democrat, or like me, none of the above, which is, I believe, what we really are, is that as a, if we've learned nothing else in this nation that, that is imperative, we, we keep ourselves in a place where we can protect ourselves because, if the truth be told, uh, folks really don't like black people, not just in this nation, but all over the world. Now, I have a spiritual theory about that that I've covered in my spiritual program, but we won't go there right now. This is simply the fact. We know this, okay? So I'm just saying if you're in a nation such as ours, when, when we're not really equal, a whole bunch of people are walking around with guns that don't like you. <laughs> okay, I'm like, why am I championing for gun control? Because if they ever shut that spigot off, guess who's not going to have a gun? Me. See, they're not taking the, they're not going to be confiscating the guns from folks. Now, I know they're going to be offering buyback programs, so people that need money or people that are broke are going to be uh, <laughs> selling their guns. I'm just saying that 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 all things being equal. You know, all things being uh, just as they are, uh, if, if the gun spigot is ever shut off, they're not going to confiscate guns from those people that have them. You're just not going to be able to get one. So, so why are black people championing this cause for gun control? You can't say, well, because it's in our communities, the young people, you know, gangbangers or whatever, killing themselves because they didn't get their guns legal anyway. So, so that's not going to be fixed. So, so, so the only black people in this nation, other than criminals, who get their guns illegally anyway, the only other black people, the only other black people uh, uh, who will be affected by the, the, the gun spigot being turned off are, are the, just the regular black folks that, are try that, that need to be protecting themselves, okay? So, 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 you know, I have guns. I have an AR. I have a shotgun. I have a Glock. You know, I've never shot the AR. I had never shot the shotgun, and I only shot my Glock when I was qualifying for my CCW, okay? But, but I have them just in case because it's my responsibility to protect me, to protect my family, okay? And, and there's a lot of crazy people out there that don't like black people. you got to know that. <laughs> and Democrats and Republicans, for real. And so I'm just saying we need to make sure and maintain the reality of our status in this nation. That, that we always need to be protecting ourselves because there are people out there that hate you. For real. And so, yeah, I don't see it. I don't see it. So this is not political. It's just common sense that you always need to be able to protect yourself. That, that's, that's why we were victimized so. See, see, a lot of folks want to believe, you know, that even the, the Africans coming here, you know, the uncivilized, weak, you know, and all this, that's why Europe was here. Look, look, the Europeans did have the, the weaponry. But, but, but what allowed the Europeans to, to conquer the Africans and even the Native Americans and other indigenous people over this, over this planet was that the other people were more civilized than the Europeans, okay? I mean, you can go into any, any high school. The bully usually isn't that bright. He, the bully usually doesn't have manners. <laughs> the bully is uncivilized. And, and so the bully does things to civilized folks that civilized folks wouldn't do in kind, okay? So, so that's what you have. You, you don't have, I mean, if you look at, say, Africa, for example, hey, you look at the, the pyramids, you look at the societies, the geometries, the, uh, the, the medicines, you know, the math and, and the agriculture, the, uh, all the stuff that, that emanated out of, out of Africa, you recognize those were not uncivilized people, okay? The, the Chinese who were manhandled, you know, and really brought to their knees by the Europeans, they were more civilized than the Europeans, and, and, the, and the Europeans had the armament, and they were, able to, they were able to subject the Chinese to their will, okay? Not because they were more civilized, recognize us, not because they were more intellectual, not because they had it going on up here like that. They just had the weaponry. Realize that, okay? And, and so, so, you know, as, so as we're talking you know, about this whole black thing, and it's probably going to be uh, winding up in a little bit, we need to, to be cognizant of the fact that uh, 150 or so years ago, your black people were slaves in this nation, okay? And, and so even as unequal as things are, and I believe a lot of it is our own fault, is un because we're trusting folks who don't like us to do the right thing. When does that ever happen?
Okay? But, but, but the point is, we need to realize just how strong and how talented we are. That, 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 you know, back in the day when there were slaves, most white people did not have slaves because slaves cost money. Most white people were poor. Okay? M m many white people worked side by side with the slaves in the fields. Now, they weren't slaves, but they, were, they had a life of, they were just white inwards, okay? Uh, they just weren't slaves. So, so now you have today, this many years later, the children that, of, of those that were slaves, the, the descendants of those that were slaves, compared to the descendants of those who were not slaves, were all pretty much on the same level. So that speaks a lot to our ingenuity, to, to our insight, to our ability to, to, to live in and even manipulate a system that is not doing justice for us, but we can still survive, we can still be prosperous. That is a gift that we have. And, and it's evident that we're still here and we're still surviving. So, so we need to utilize that. We, unfortunately, when we take our eyes off of the prize, we get complacent, okay? And, and we stop trying. We stop running so hard, okay? It's like you're running a, a four-leg le relay race, and, and the last, and, and it's going, you're in front, you're in front, you're getting there, or you're catching up, you're catching up, you're catching up. But before you've caught up, that last leg starts slowing down, and man, it's real comfortable out here. Nice little breeze going on. <laughs> Look, I'm running with everybody. Yeah, but you ain't there yet, okay? We can't do that. So, so I'm just saying we need to realize the strength that we have. So, so whether it's in entertainment, we have, we're strong. Whether it's in sports, we're strong. Whether it's in business, we've seen it. We're strong. Military leadership, Colin Powell, a lot of those guys, we've seen it. President of the United States, Barack Obama. Who have you seen in your lifetime as president that measured up to Barack Obama? None. That's why one of the reasons they hate black folks so much, man. That's when he became president, man. He dwarfed intellectually the the individuals he ran against in the Democratic primary, and he dwarfed intellectually those that were challenging him actual for the presidency. Two terms, nobody stood a chance because he was that. So, so we have that ability, we have that potential. But too often we drop it. We, we, we accept the, the society's uh, description of us. The society sees us as pawns on a chessboard. That, that we're just utilized for the well-being of the other pieces. Okay, That's why there's so many of them. They're expendable. Okay, but, but a pawn must realize, and most folks don't realize the strength that you have as a pawn, that if you're playing the game of chess, if that pawn gets all the way to the other side of the board, you can transform that pawn into any piece, any chess piece you would. You can conceivably have three queens, which are pretty powerful pieces on the board, and you will definitely win. You will not lose. The problem is that we are so subdued in our minds, we don't realize the power and the strength that we have, and we fail. We fail to, to embrace what is ours. Why? Because we've taken our eyes off that prize, remember? The eyes off the prize is before us and is easily attainable. Those before us sacrifice for us to get so far, and we've just laid that baton down on the track. I'm going to suggest to you, as, as we're closing up here, the way. The way out of this mess that we're in, it's going to take a commitment. It's going to take a sacrifice. See, see, in this day and age, it's become so easy for people simply, that rather than do what needs to be done to make something happen, we can just get on the keyboard, get on the internet, and, 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 and complain. Talk about how unfair things are. But you're not doing anything. And, and, and what I'm suggesting is if you want to get our situation, I mean, I can tell you in one year, black people can be totally equal in this nation. One year. What's the remedy? The remedy is to stop doing drugs of any kind, to stop drinking alcohol of any kind, to stop breaking any kind of laws, to get healthy, and to get educated, and to get armed. That's it. Man, you stop doing drugs and you stop doing alcohol, you financially break the institutions that are profiting off of your substance abuse issue. You'll become healthy, they'll become broke, because most of their money, <laughs> Chevis, all this stuff that we have identified with ourselves, we think we're cool, we're just being used by these companies to fill the line their pockets. 
We bought into something that we are not. We think that that's cool. It's not. Drugs, and as well, breaking any kind of laws, you've just taken yourself out of the clutches of the police to, 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 to manhandle you, to do anything they want, to, uh, a blank check to do whatever they want to do to you because you're breaking the law. And, and part of that breaking the law is killing each other, the gangbang, and all that stuff, man. We, that needs to end. Get healthy. Be a strong warrior. Be healthy. Stop eating the junk foods, man. Who's Man, they're putting those junk foods out. They know we're killing you, but you know you're buying it anyway. Buy healthy foods. Exercise. You can't sit and be a, a warrior running around with one foot or half your toes missing. Come on now. Take these high blood pressure medicines for the rest of your life. Come on now. Get yourself healthy. Educated. Education is the key. Out of the mess. Educated. My, I started college uh, when I was 50 years old at Sinclair College. My daughter was three. Ten years later, I earned my MBA. She's 13. That's what she saw all of her life. She wants to be an attorney as well, a PhD. <laughs> what do I say this? We do these things. We demonstrate these things before our children. And we will become like our ancestors, sacrificing ourselves for the lives of our children rather than being convinced to kill them before they're even born. Come on, man. This isn't political. This is a reality of black folks in America. We need to see this. We need to be well. Well, well anyway, I know I've talked your ear off. We'll pick up on this next week. But, and, and I do want to thank you for listening. And I want to invite you to listen again. You take care. Bye. All right, that's it. That's it.